والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاشرب في قلوبهم العجل بكفرهم سبحان ربك رب العزه اما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made human beings to consist of two components. One component of our uh, creation is our body and the other component is our soul. Now each of these individual components has their central or their head office. the head of the body is the nafs within us there is something called the nafs and that nafs it can be described as our animalistic desires our base animalistic desires and that is the command center of the body the other aspect of our creation is our soul and the command center of the soul is the heart So you have two aspects your body and your soul the key aspect of the body is the nafs and the key aspect of the soul is the heart now the battle the spiritual battle that lies within each individual lies in their heart the leader of the army that aims to make one's heart pure is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the leader of that army that aims to destroy the heart of, the, of an individual is shaitan now the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not necessarily present within us or with us but his teachings and those who represent his teachings they represent the army that battles over purifying an individual's heart and shaitan and his henchmen they represent the army that aims to destroy the heart of an individual but recognize that actually the battle is over the heart why because the heart controls the body meaning the physical body basically what comes in our heart that's what we do somebody develops a passion for the deen no one can stop him his hands begin to act according to the deen his feet begin to walk to places of the deen his mind begins to reflect on the deen his tongue begins to speak to the his visions become of the deen that's because it came in that person's heart the idea of deen the love of allah the ittiba of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that idea somehow planted in the heart of a person and even in the most difficult environment if that idea is stuck in the heart of a person the entire body will submit to the deen similarly if there is an individual who has shirk in his heart you can put that individual in the most righteous envi- righteous environment and their body will emanate shirk the hands will do acts of shirk the feet will walk towards shirk the tongue will speak of shirk so in the end the heart became the essence that's where passion lies and that's actually then what overtakes the rest of the body and the heart is the focus of our path it is the focus of an individual who wants to improve themselves now within the heart there are two important issues number 1 is the soil of the heart number 1 is the soil of the heart and number 2 are the seeds that are planted within the heart Okay what do we mean by the soil of the heart in order to understand the soil of the heart you just have to understand agriculture if you know anyone who's involved in farming or who even just plants a garden in their backyard or who spends some time harvesting crops and planting seeds they'll tell you that every seed doesn't grow in every soil some trees grow in this soil some uh, roses grow in that soil tulips grow in a different soil each seed requires its potential soil and until the soil is there the seed won't take and the seed won't grow so 
in the heart of an individual has to be created the proper soil. And if that soil isn't there, no matter how many seeds are placed in the heart, that seed will not take. So what is that soil? What that soil is, is the uh, focus on the life of the hereafter. It's a focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a focus on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When an individual's mind and dreams and aspirations, etc., are all focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then their heart becomes very fertile. Fertile to what? Fertile to the, to the seeds of the deen. So what happens? They begin to hear of the deen, they begin to speak of the deen, and every time they hear something, it sticks. See, this is actually the key issue, the stickiness of the heart. Why is it that we sit and we hear so many good things? How many times do we have to hear the same hadith and we don't act on it? How many times do we hear about a particular good deed and we still don't do it? How many times do we promise ourselves, I'm going to spend more time reciting the Qur'an, I'm going to spend more time in muraqabah, I'm going to spend more time fixing my schedule, I'm going to give more in sabaka, it just doesn't happen? The reason is because it comes as far as the mind. The words come into the air, the mind begins to process it, but the mind has to plant the seed in the heart. Now the mind generates the impulse that sends it to the heart. When it goes to the heart, the soil is not there. The soil is not there, the seed gets planted, the seed withers away. Now again the seed gets planted, the seed withers away. Again the seed gets planted, the seed withers away. So in our minds, our ideas become great, but they never materialize into plants because the soil is not there. At the same time, an individual can hear something which has nothing to do with the deen, and it sticks so solid. Somebody comes, they give, give a seminar on how you can make $50,000 in real estate, and then it sticks. We start thinking about it day and night. We start signing, going onto the internet and Googling that class. We ask anybody who's taken that class. We start thinking about how much we're going to make. We go to the bookstore and begin to read all these things. The whole body becomes submissive to that idea. Now, what was it? It was a simple idea that came into the mind. It slipped through the mind a couple times. It came to the heart. The soil was so prepared that it stuck and the seed grew. One single reminder, and bam, the whole body is in submission. Now the hands are driving to the bookstore and the feet are walking around the, the neighborhood assessing different properties because, that, because the soil is there in the heart. Now that soil, right, that becomes a very, very important issue, the soil of the heart. And that actually is the key issue in the path of Tathawul. This is actually what we aim to do. The aim is to create a fertile soil in a person's heart. When that soil becomes fertile, then the ideas and the company and the goal of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it sticks. And when it sticks, then the person takes off on their own. Very little water is needed. Very little light is needed. It's a very, very durable seed. But it has to stick. You have to at least put it with some minimal nutrient. And so that actually is the creating of the soil of the heart. Now, we do many things to create this soil. For example, one, we spend time reciting the Holy Quran. Anytime an individual recites the Quran, and spends time with the Qur'an, it has an effect on the heart. And it creates within the heart a very receptive soil. Similarly, is the act that we constantly remind one another to do, which is istighfar, which cleans up the soil, salawat, which fertilizes the soil, and muraqabah, which helps to enlighten that soil. Now, what do we mean by muraqabah? Muraqabah basically means that you sit and you reflect on various things. Muraqabah yuraqibu in the Arabic language means to guard or to watch over. Okay? Muraqabah yuraqibu means to guard or to watch over. Muraqabah is the act of guarding something or the act of watching over something. So what is a person who does muraqabah? What are they doing? They are watching over their soil. They are guarding their soil. Right? They are reflecting in order to enlighten their soil. That's basically what they're doing. Now, if you go through the lives of the Sahaba, you'll see that they were very deep in their reflection. And these are called muraqabat, for example. The Sahaba would sit quietly 
and for hours reflect on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a muraqabah. It's a reflection. Similarly, the Sahaba would sit and they would think about the Day of Judgment. That's a muraqabah. They would sit and they would think about their life in the grave. That's a muraqabah. They would sit and think, we are so blessed that Allah took us from A and He gave us the company of the Prophet wasallam to make us Z. And they would reflect on that. That was a muraqabah. They would sit in salah and they would recite the same ayah over and over throughout the entire night reflecting on the depth of that ayah. That's a muraqabah. So all of these things are muraqabah. Now what we do is we say, look, we organize the muraqabah. So we say, okay, first thing you should do is think about the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart. Reflect on it. Reflect on the status of your heart. Reflect on the state of your heart. Then we say, okay, you should do that concerning the Pope Sallallahu and them. Do that concerning the life of the grave. Do that concerning the life of the Akhirah, etc. But that's basically what muraqabah is. Now when an individual does that, it creates a very, very fertile soil within their heart. Now the other aspect of the heart are the seeds. Seeds have to be planted within the heart. And how are seeds planted within the heart? They're planted through the company of one another. And through the impulses that the mind generates. And basically the strongest effect upon the heart is actually from the mind. The mind has the number one effect on the heart. If the mind is generating good thoughts, those thoughts hit the heart and eventually they stick. If the mind is generating bad thoughts, when that thought comes in the heart, it could take a year to get rid of it. Sometimes it takes 10 years to get rid of it. Sometimes it takes a lifetime to get rid of it. And sometimes it doesn't go in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts the person in hellfire for a while to get rid of it. But eventually it will be gotten rid of before an individual will enter Jannah. So actually it's the heart that will be judged on the day of judgment. Now, that is very, that is, that is the important issue concerning developing one's mind. Because what comes in the mind is the impulses that are going to be generated that will eventually plant within the heart. So now if an individual sits and reflects upon the life of this world, number one, their impulses will always be generated concerning this world. So if they're looking after the buck, they're going to be thinking about how can I make the next buck? What's the way that I can improve my profit line? What's the way that I can get more? What's the way that I can earn more? What's the way that I can amass more? What happens? Initially you start within halal. Eventually the mind takes you beyond halal into haram. And even the haram begins to look good because the goal is now implanted within the heart. So that is very important. That's one example of the power of the mind. Now similarly, if a person's mind becomes focused on the hereafter, then the individual begins to think about the hereafter Ideas about the hereafter are generated. The, the implant within the heart, the implant within the heart, so much so that if the person is doing haram, eventually the mind takes over the heart and that person begin, begins doing haram. And then that person begins following the sunnah. And then that person begins following the mustahabbat. And then they reach a, a pinnacle within the deen. So the mind becomes a very important issue in this equation as well. And again, that's the importance of the muraqabah. We train the mind in order to reflect on Allah, to focus on Allah, so that an individual can generate these positive thoughts. That is also the importance of Islamic knowledge. When an individual has proper Islamic knowledge, their mind becomes very straight, very pure. And the ideas that are generated within their mind become very restricted. And they're regulated. It's a means of regulating the mind. So when a person becomes an alim, their thoughts are always about the deen. They know if I do this, I'm going to get this much reward. But wait, if I do that, I'm going to get even more reward. Why don't I go and do this? This is very re- rewarded. So now their impulses are all generated from what? From Quran and Hadith. And when those impulses are generated from Quran and Hadith, and they have the proper deeds that fertilize their heart, then it's just nur upon nur. They think of something good, it sticks, they do it. They think of the next good thing, it sticks, they do it. They think of the next good thing, it sticks, they do it. So what happens? within their heart grows a beautiful garden. Now what type of garden? A garden that provides them pleasure, number one, because they can smell the flowers and they take advantage of the shade and they're eating its fruit. Number two, it provides everyone around them a benefit because everyone who comes in their company can see the beauty of that garden. They can smell the beauty of those flowers. And then on the Day of Judgment, it provides the most supreme and permanent benefit 
in that those, that bouquet of flowers is presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in exchange, he sees the purity of that person's heart and he places them into Jannah so that they can permanently enjoy the deeds that they did for, the deeds that were done for Allah in this world. So it's very, very important that we place an emphasis on the purity of our heart. The more pure the heart is, the more likely a deed is, is going to stick. The more likely that garden will grow. And the more likely we'll be able to progress along this path. So that is the importance of the, of the zikr. When an individual does the zikr, it focuses on the heart. It purifies the heart. It creates a fertile env- environment within the heart. And eventually, that results in the growing of that garden that allows them to progress along this beautiful path called the deen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to be among those who fertilize our hearts, to be among those who constantly plant good seeds within the heart, and to be among those who have the tawfiq to grow those seeds in our heart so that, on the, so that we can take the benefit of a pure heart both in this world and so that we, we may be rewarded with, a, with the rewards given for a pure heart on the Day of Judgment. وآخر الدعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين